Alright, even though for the last part, the comparison between hormonal and nervous control is not part of your syllabus, it is still an important segment because in your tenure series, many questions can actually ask you about the difference between these two types of control. So firstly, I choose to use this analogy to explain the concept. I have two screenshots, one on Facebook and one on Google uh, on Gmail. Let's say for both platforms, I were to type in the message, Mr. Lee is happy. Alright, what is the main difference? The main difference is this, if I were to update my status, I am happy. Alright, every Tom, Dick and Harry, every one of my friends were actually knows it. However, for the Gmail, I am only sending it to a specific person. A specific person, alright? So I hope that you can really see this uh, clear distinction. For Facebook, it can affect more than one target organ, more than one target audience. However, for Gmail, it is very specific. So this will be one of the main difference between hormonal and nervous. Are you able to tell me which one is the one which can affect more than one target organ? All right? You should be thinking about hormones, hormonal control, because that is part of the definition of hormones, right? It can alter the activity of one or more target organ. All right, for the table, let us not waste any more time. Compare and contrast question again, you must talk about similarities. So for hormonal system and nervous system, both systems serve as a mean of coordination within the body. All right, it includes your stimulus and your effector. For hormonal system, the signal involved will be hormones or chemical signals. Whereas for your nervous system, we are talking about electrical signals in the form of nerve impulses. For means of transport, hormonal system will involve the transportation by blood. Whereas for nervous system, bioneurons. Speed and duration of response in hormonal system. The speed is usually pretty slow if you compare it to nervous control. The duration of hormonal control, it is usually short-lived or long-lived. It can be both. It can be short-lived or long-lived. Some hormones can remain in your blood for a few hours, all right, such as your insulin and glucagon if the blood glucose level is not reduced or, or it is not regulated all right, immediately. However, for nervous control, the response is usually short-lived. Right? Like you choose to take up a cup from the table. This action will be short-lived. Even for reflex action, even shorter. The nature of action for hormonal system, it is always involuntary. You cannot control your body to release certain hormones. You can't do that. All right. However, for nervous system, the nature of action may be voluntary or involuntary, such as all right, your reflex action will be involuntary, you can't control. However, for your daily movements, which can, um, uh, for your daily movements, which help you to move around, those will be voluntary actions, right? So the nature of action will be voluntary. Lastly, for the scope of effect, for hormonal system, it can target more than one target organ, right? So through the analogy, I was trying to show you this. And usually for nervous system, it is localized, right? So when nerve impulses is sent via the motor neuron to the iris, the muscles at the iris, only your iris muscles will be affected. But your, your arm muscles, your leg muscles will not be affected. That's why it is usually localized. And this is a mind map. You can um, take a look at the mind map at home, at your leisure time. So this is a wrap for hormones. Thank you.